This is WRTV's Brunch at the Brickyard, sponsored by Garmon Construction. the people, and I can't wait to see the cars going around this track. This is the biggest event in the entire world, and it's going to be life-changing. We're going to kiss the brick. It's a great time in this town, and it's just a lot of fun. The party, the concert, the people. How are you guys pacing yourself today? As long as I don't get taken home by a state trooper, I'll be all right. It's the best day of the g year! And welcome in. We are live outside of Gate 1 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as we count down to the 107th running of the Indy 500. I'm Mark Mullins alongside Brad Brown. And I'm Nicole Griffin alongside Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory. That's right. So the party here is now in full effect. The sounds of electronic music filled the snake pit this morning. They sure did, and that's where thousands of people are having a rave-like party. Many DJs will perform in the snake pit, all headlined by Cascade. But unfortunately, DJ Diesel, a.k.a. Shaq, did not show up today. He won't be performing here due to his NBA playoff obligation. But out on the front stretch of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the field of 33 have started to assemble as the grid comes together for the pre-race ceremonies led by the young Spaniard, Alex Pillow from the pole position all the way back to Graham Ray Hall at P33. So many stories, nine former champions in the field, and each of them will be spending the next couple of hours getting themselves down now to that final countdown before driver introductions and the green flag here for the 107th run of the Indianapolis 500. Kevin, we've had ourselves quite the day out here weather-wise so far, and it looks like we're in for a good one when the race gets here. It's no ordinary race day. Temperatures are cool. It's a gray day at the Speedway. Temperatures in the 70s now. The chance for rain isn't zero. I've learned that, right? You never say never, but the chance for rain is very low. Temperature will stay low. I think some people will be fooled. We don't have this bright blazing sunshine but you can still get a sunburn first thing Nicole said when she looked at me today was oh my have you seen yourself <laughs> I had so much sunscreen, sunscreen on so much sunscreen <laughs> now, right <laughs> we do have team coverage for you here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway yeah we are live outside of gate one Rafael Sanchez Lauren Casey and Kevin Gregory will have coverage from Goda Plaza and Brad Brown and takes us to the garages and starting grid Adam Shumes is checking out the scene in the town of Speedway but we go first to WRTV's Caitlin Kendall and Tom Todd Clausen in the snake pit. All right, the party is blowing. I got my friend Todd Clausen. Todd, in the party out here in the snake pit. Uh, it's unbelievable, and it, the race hasn't even started yet, and so there's a lot of we'll call liquid courage, liquid courage, and interesting outfits. Absolutely, go, go, go. outfits. There's there's drinks, there's outfits, there's dancing, there's party. Uh, so obviously we're close to the stage. It goes way back to the hill. There, there's people on the hill, and again. We're still on the first act, so there is so much fun. There's even a man in a banana suit. If you can see the banana suit right there, everyone is just here to have a good time. The people here, so many people have said, I don't care about the race. They care yeah, about the party. I, I think most of the people in here, they said it's it's about the party, and they'll find out tomorrow yeah. probably who wins the race. Yeah, or maybe check on their phone every now and again. <laughs> right. Everyone said, and I asked them, how are you pacing yourselves? Everyone says, we're not. Yeah, we're not. They're just going. All right. See, well, see what happens. Yeah, the party's going to continue. We're going to go find some more people. Maybe go up on the hill so you guys can see the people partying up there. All right, sounds good. Off we go. Yeah, and as the party continues at the Snake Pit, we're out right outside the track to my left. You have some tailgaters going on, playing some Cornell, as you have fans walking in. But I want to be joined by a very special fan. His name's Clayton. Clayton, this is your actually first ever Indy 500. How excited are you? Uh, you know, I've, I've never been here before. I'm really excited to see what the infield has to offer. I've got front seats and infield, just trying to see what the uh, best experience I can get. Front seats and infield, how'd you get that? It's all online, you know, just got to see what you can get. Got the snake pit tickets and the front side tickets, you know. You have quite the backpack here. What do you have in it? Honestly, I got some sandwiches, got some beer, you know, just trying to put it all together so we don't go down tonight, you know, just trying to stay alive, you know. Well, operation, make sure you pay. Have a good time. Thank you so much. And as we continue around here, the town of Speedway's fans start to trickle in. We do have Devin's 50th 
500. I want to keep you guys here for one man. What does this mean to be your 50th consecutive 500? Oh, it's so excited. Here with family, friends, all from all over the U.S. We, I'm in from Dallas, friends in from New York, Kentucky, all over the place. I've been coming here since 73. It's just crazy. Just well, crazy. Hopefully, hopefully you have a great time. Thank you so much for being a part of it today. As you hear them, the fans will start the cheering. Nicole, Mark, the party continues. But for now, I'm going to send it <laughs> you back know, to Adam, you. Uh, you know, Adam, what I love about this is that you run into people who have never been to the 500 and people who have been here year after year after year. 50 oh, times. 50 times. I love it. I'm going to say the only thing left in that bag, though, is sandwiches at this point. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, Clayton had himself the well stocked for the day. The young man <laughs> seems like he had his act put together to get to, let's say, 2 o'clock, and then we'll figure it out from there. Yeah, figure it out from there. That's, that's good pace stands. at this point. That's what the concession stands. Right. I'll tell you what's really impressive about walking around this place here is that you meet fans not just from around the country, from around the world. I met fans this morning from Finland, from Sweden, from Germany that have come here for Indianapolis, many of them for the first time, specifically for this weekend, to come and experience this place like we know it each and every year. And that's why they call this such a global event here, yeah. and we are proud to host it. Yeah, and our defending champion is a young man named Marcus Eriksson from Sweden. He'll be starting on the fourth row today on the inside in position number 10 as he gets set to try and become the first back-to-back -back champion since Elio Castroneves won two in a row here, and he'll be driving that number eight Husky Ice Chip Ganassi Racing Honda to see if he can go from 10 to 1 back to back here at Indy. Day number 365 for Marcus Erickson as the Indy 500 champion. Time to do it all over again right now. Just kind of tell me the feeling today. We talked to you a lot about this as the defending champion coming in here and what this day is like so far. Yeah, I mean, race day at the IMS is always so special. You know, I love this day. And just, just the morning, seeing all the fans coming into to this arena, it's just, uh, it's just special. So it's been an incredible year for me. The last 12 months has been amazing. Uh, I would like to do it for another 12 months, you know. But, Absolutely. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's really cool and I'm really excited about uh, the race today. What is your biggest takeaway as you start to think back to last year? Obviously the playbook can't be exact, but what is kind of one takeaway as you guys start this one? You go, okay, let's think about what we did last year for this year. I think patience, you know, that's how we won the race last year. We were solid all day. We were thinking long, long game, you know, we, we didn't go up front and, you know, flat our speed early we were just there solid in the top 10 top 5 all day and then in the end when it mattered we put our foot down and went for it and I think we, we have a similar game plan today you know we, we're starting 10th obviously so we want to move up slowly throughout the first half of the race and then 20 30 laps to go we want to be there in pounds you are starting on quite a row right there you got a rookie beside you and another champion on the outside but champions ahead of you and a lot of experience in this field what do you think the first two or three laps play out like here it's always tough to say, you know, you like to think people are, you know, thinking it's a long race, but still it's in the start and restart that a lot of things can happen, you can move up a lot of places, so there's a, there's a lot of good guys out there around me, so you need to have your elbows out, I think, from the start, and uh, the start here is always so awesome anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to go out there and, you know, put on a show for all the fans coming here today. I right, show him the champion's ring, yeah. he's got it on their hand there, looking for another one yeah, right here. We have more space here. Marcus Erickson, 22, <laughs> looking for 23, starting P10. I don't know if you heard him there, but said elbows out is a driver's term there on the start. They want their space. they got to be careful, though, because that first lap could ruin your entire day oh, yeah. if you're not very careful. Try that here, elbows, elbows out. Right. Elbows yeah. out, guys. Yeah. 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 Can I tell you what's been most impressive about Marcus over the course of his year is how he has embraced being the Indy 500 champion and what it means to this place, to this city, to the IndyCar series, and to his home country of Sweden, and is really looking forward to the opportunity to defend that title today. Now, have we ever seen a back-to-back -back champion? Right? Elio was the last Elio. one. Castro Nevis won in 2001 and 2002. It's been 21 years since. By the way, if Marcus wins today, the folks at Board Warner have a $420,000 bonus on top of his Indy wow. paycheck wow. that'll pay him off there. Let's so go Marcus. extra yes, big payday, yeah. some incentive for that eight car to get to the front. And, you know, Kevin, you had a chance. You were out and about talking to fans, and you got a chance to talk to the pace car driver, Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah, so what's interesting, Brad, we don't know who's going to lead the last lap, but we do know who will lead them to yes. the first lap. And what was fun about this is I asked Tyrese, I said, does this make you a big deal in the locker room? He said, most of the guys are gone right now. Oh. They don't know. They'll hear about it when they get back. I said they'll hear about it in, in just a few minutes. And now you'll hear from Tyrese. Hello, Pacers fans. Tua. We got two minutes with Tyrese Halliburton. And I see you're wearing your Circle City Corvette Club jacket. Yeah. Today's the big day. Yes, it is. I'm very excited. So normally it's his right hand. 
Show me that that is so skilled. Today, it's all about the right foot. <laughs> did Sarah Fisher, who's been helping you talk about tying your shoes before hopping in? Uh, she didn't, but we'll see if they yell at me when I get up there. Whatever it takes for the most safe ride possible, I'm going to do. But it does bring up an interesting point. Do you have to wear any kind of safety suit or? Uh, a helmet. A helmet I got to put on. Uh, like a little, a little like jacket thing that that snaps the back of the helmet yeah. to avoid whiplash. Uh, so that's kind of what I got to, and then really buckle up in the car. How much time have you been in the car? Uh, I spent like 40 minutes in it like three days ago doing uh, training with Sarah Fisher. So it's not fun. Does this make a guy like you want to buy a car like that? Uh, they're definitely pushing it on me. My girlfriend was like, "Hey, I really like this car too." So we'll see. It's in the air for sure. And so in the locker room, how does this play? You've set the standard now. You're driving the pace car for the Indy 500. Do other guys like, hey? Yeah, I haven't. I've only seen a couple guys since then. Uh, there, there's not many guys in town right now, but everybody's been texting me, wishing me luck. Oh, yeah. they're going to see this worldwide. Yes. They're right. going to see this worldwide. If we can stand back to back, uh, let it be known that the weatherman has some height. <laughs> yeah, people don't know that. Have you, No weatherman's ever blocked your shot, though, right? No, never, never, never. And it never will happen. <laughs> I've been grounded. All right, so we, we talked about elbows out. I was boxing out there. With <laughs> yeah, you were. Ah! Good form to rebound there. I got to tell you, I was here when Tyrese was doing his practice laps with Sarah Fisher a couple nights ago. There's some very solid technique that goes into how they drive these cars around here. 75 miles an hour, very specific on the pace laps. They got to hug the line. They have a very kind of protocol that they have to go through to make it go with the green flag. We Remember in Detroit? Make the switch. Oh. In Detroit <laughs> years ago, they crashed the pace car. Yeah, they oh, had, wow. they've had so you, some, you, you got to be careful. With that. By the way, that Corvette would be sort of a mid-range car in the Pacers parking garage, just for the record. Those guys uh, sure. got some rides. I'm but Tyrese, sure I think do. if he could figure out a way to get that uh, mist red metallic or whatever it's called there from Chevy into his garage, he would certainly like to have it. I love that. I love it. <laughs> so I gotta tell you, here at Gate One, we've been watching the crowds go in. So many people inside, in fact, they're expecting one of the biggest crowds uh, since the 100th running of the 8500. And everything is going very smooth inside of Gate One here, but we want to toss it out to our Lauren Casey and Rafael Sanders. Sanchez. They talked to IMS President Doug Bowles. Joining us now, of course, another phenomenal leader. Who Ron, really knows this he place. He knows this place <laughs> from top to bottom. Doug Bowles, good morning to you. How good, are you? Good morning. Well, it's like Christmas Day. I'm great. It's May and it's race day in Indianapolis. You couldn't ask for anything better. And the weather's going to hold out, I hope. Ooh. Oh, we're not going to talk about that, Doug. Well, I have to say I hope, just to be no, sure. No, 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 no. We've already said we're for not sure. selling any rain ponchos today at this place. <laughs> have you slept at all? To be honest, no. So I, I did. Um, I get. I got in bed last night about 3:15 uh, and just sat there and sat there and I thought I just can't do it. And at that point in time, if you go to sleep, you're not. You know, I feel oh, worse yeah. at some level. So I stayed out here. So wrote a note to staff to thank them for everything about 2:30. Sent it to everybody on staff just to remind them that we have the coolest jobs in the world. We get to set the stage for this amazing event and how proud of them I, I am. And we can't do it without being a full team. So and then I. Sat there and started thinking about, okay, I hope the gates are okay, I hope traffic's not terrible, you know, all the things, the stuff you can't control at some level. Well, everything's going well so far, and we know it's going to be a great day here at the Motor Speedway. It doesn't matter how often you come out here, you guys have a lot of exciting new things going on. I saw you at the new Spectator Mound, the things yep. were extended, so a lot of changes out here. Yeah, I'm really excited about the Spectator Mound, because that's a GA ticket, right? That's the cheapest ticket in the house, and you can bring 15 and under for free with you, so I hope a lot of families take advantage of that give them an opportunity to be at the Speedway, but the mound is a lot bigger, so you see all of turn four. We've got a new video board in the infield that I think will help folks. My voice from the parade yesterday screaming, thank you for coming, thank you kind of thing. My, so I'm struggling a bit this morning, but um, no, I think that's, that's one of the things I'm the most excited about, just seeing people in the infield. And the IMS says they are trying to get more kids, more parents to bring their kids, you know, to create that next generation of race, racing fans. And so I had a chance to talk to a woman who uh, explains what you can do to engage your children when I you bring them to the you track. Uh, you can catch that at WRTV.com. Yeah, and they talked about turn three. We're going to be going out live, or actually, we're going to be going out to Todd Clausen at turn three, and that's where my husband's actually waiting with, with a cooler <laughs> oh, full of beer, some oh sandwiches. Tell him I can't wait to get out there, there but right. Todd Clausen's out there now for us. Hey, Todd. All right, we made it to the turn three party lot. Everybody's tailgating, getting ready for the 107th running of the Indy 500. You might recognize this guy if you're an avid follower of WRTV. He was the cover photo of our race story that you can see that we posted earlier. That's last year's pip. This is Joe Smith. Mom, I made it. 
I'm safe, Mom. I made it. He, 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 made, he made it back for another year. You may recognize Joe. He's a legend in Broad Ripple uh, these days. So how many years have you been coming to the race? Uh, this would be about 18, All 18 right. trips. 18, yeah. 18 trips. Do you have a favorite one so far? Uh, when Jill DeFerrin won in uh, 03. Okay. Oh, that's not right. But All right. You have, a pick, you have a pick for today? Palau. All right, yeah. Palau. He's going with the pole sitter. Yeah. All right, so you guys got cornhole. You got the grill going. This group, there you go. They're kicking it off. Shotgunning some nice cold brewskis here uh, this morning. Get, get in the party going. All right. Oh, oh. I, 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 I give you about a seven of the ten shotgun in that beer. You get, you get about, uh, you get about eight and a half because it could have been a little quicker. All right. Here's the other party. What's going on, guys? You guys having a good time? All right, all right. Happy race day. So, 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 what's the plan here? We're just tailgating, partying, and then where, where are you guys going for the race? Where are we going? Yeah. We're going right here. Oh, you're, take three. All right, you're, all day. you're not even going to the seat. Oh no. It's an all-day party, huh? Uh -huh. Hey, come here. Wait, what's your name? Lachlan, sir. Where are you from? Indianapolis, baby. Yeah. Oh. It's the best day of the year. Uh, <laughs> right, I, 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 like, I like your outfit. I like your outfit. All right. And anybody else? What we got going on? Where are you from? Indianapolis. Uh, is everybody from Indianapolis? Oh. Uh, not you. Not you. Where are you from? Cincinnati, Ohio. All right. So you're you're still you're still close. How many years y'all been coming and doing this? You're eight. You're eight. You're eight. You're eight. All right, all right. It's gonna be well, a hot track today. Hot track. All right. Hot track. All right. Well, you, you guys carry on. Enjoy your day. Thanks for joining us here on WRTV. That's the latest from Turn Three. Back to you. A lot of fun out there in Turn Three, and you know it wouldn't be race day if you didn't see some America T-shirts. <laughs> We've seen some interesting outfits out here today. Many of them heading out to the Snake Pit. Yeah, you can tell who's coming in to sit in the stands mm -hmm. and who's coming to go to Turn Up Turn difference. Three or the Snake Pit yes. there. And we are paying our bleeper person extra money yeah. today because they have to be on standby <laughs> with that button very quickly. Yeah, our Caitlin Kendall got the assignment to head out to the Snake Pit. Let's see what she found today. Obviously at the Snake Pit, the drinks are flowing. We got a couple people over here. They're going to give us a cooler tour. Okay, okay. What is in the cooler? Well, we got water, which is very important on a day like today. Water's at the bottom. We got, we got Sprite. We got the Trulies. We got the Little Minis. We got some snacks. We got all the essentials. All right, all right. What's over here? All right, so what we got is food. We've got shooters. Hey, don't worry. We've got the shooters. We've got the shooters, but we also <laughs> All right, guys, obviously, today is going to be a really fun day filled with partying. He's obviously really excited. Okay. All right, so much. Of course, the party is going to keep going. I'm going to try to find some really cool outfits. Hey, Rick. Has anyone heard from Caitlin since? We actually did, and I really like that hat she was wearing. Status check, please, Caitlin. Because sometimes we Caitlin, text me that, girl? That, 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 that part of the, the track there. <laughs> that, well, was, never that was early like out there today. A lot of people showed up early to be in the 7 a.m.? Yeah. yeah. Let me it's just say day. one thing. Those that are showing up now are flowing into the track. Oh, yeah, so this are. new system, security system that it's gets great. people in, they are just filing in. What would you have to say was the difference between the snake pit and the coke lot? Uh, that one's inside and one's outside. I was at the coke lot yesterday. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. We played cornhole. We played beer pong. We saw the the jets fly over at one point, so it was a lot of fun out there. And our Adam Shoes is actually out there now. Brunch of the Brickyard has made it to the coke lot where, as you can see, race fans probably haven't had much sleep. You got the party going on here, and I'm joined by Brandon. Brandon, how much have you slept today? Uh, I think I got about like 45 hours to try to. 45 hours? You mean 45 minutes? 45 minutes, yep. Well, you can tell. You can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can tell a little bit. It smells uh -huh. really good around here. I bet. This is your second year camping. Why are you guys doing it? Uh, we just we love the environment, you know, nothing better than gather around the fire with the fellas. We're up at, uh, I don't even know what time it is, so, yeah. It, it's it's still early. You got, you got time to still continue to pace yourself. What are you guys sleeping in? What have you guys slept in? Tents? Ground? Yeah, we got the tents. It's uh, it's not the most comfortable situation, but uh, we're cuddled like sardines, and you know we're making the best of it. You guys all, you guys, you guys, you got your boys out here. Nothing really much better, right? Nothing better than that. Yeah. So take me through. What do we got? We got a fire pit. We got 
Tito's. Yep. Speaker. 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 Lot of Miller Lite. Some lot of Miller Lite. Yeah. A little bit, like three water bottles. What yeah, else like, we got going? Like three water bottles. Um, you got this guy. He's he's bringing the vibes over here. So he looks very nervous. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. He's shaking his boots. Yeah, you can tell. His his hands are really shaky right now. I guess for the people watching, what is like? How do you pace yourself? Uh, drink beer throughout the day. <laughs> yeah. Um, you heard him. He you gotta, can't hear you because he's not mic'd. You gotta you gotta chill with the hard liquor, but um, pace yourself. A couple beers, mix in the water. Yeah. Hey, Water, I have to ask the tough question. Do you guys plan on making it into the race today? Of course. Of course. Of course. You know, they say they say you got to stop drinking at lap 100 to catch the end of the race, but I might start drinking it at, like, lap 199. So. All right, that works for us. Make sure you guys have the fire pit. No accidents today. That's, that, that, that's all we need. Thank you guys so much. And we'll continue to take you on throughout our journey today, but we'll send it back to you guys. As the month of May came together, one of the more dramatic stories came in practice last Monday when driver Stefan Wilson and Catherine Legg had a crash at the end of practice in turn one. That sent Steph Wilson to the hospital where he had surgery for a fracture in his back. We can tell you that in the span of the last couple of days, Steph has been up. He's been moving, and in fact, this morning, he was here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to meet up with his Dreyer and Reinbold Racing team, have a chat with Graham Rahal as well, and we had a chance to talk with Steph as his recovery begins and how his eyes are already set on the Indy 500 in 2024. Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, good to be back. You know, um, in a lot of pain. It's been a painful week in more ways than one. You know, just the pain of the injury itself is not, not fun to deal with. But then just the pain of not being in this race was the harder thing to deal with. I was, um, when it first happened, I kind of knew there was something wrong, you know, and try to hide it, you know, stubborn race car driver like, yeah, they're going to let me race. I'm going to be fine. And then uh, when they got the MRI scans back, it was pretty evident that I was not going to be able to race, and that was uh, truly heartbreaking, you know. All the work that goes into this all year, and um, to not get the chance to be here today racing is, is, uh, is really tough, you know. It's, it's a lot of time and effort and work over the whole year to get to, to this point, and now it you know, just means I've got to do it all over again and, you know, get, get the recovery stage, uh, get through the recovery stage and, and focus on 2024. That's my, my main goal right now. Graham talked about his strong connection with you and your family. How, I want to say refreshing, but rewarding, or to have somebody like him to be able to take this seat and take this team to, to race day. Yeah, I mean, you know, Graham's a true professional. You know, he's going to do a great job in the car today. And, you know, uh, he was, you know, the, the, the logical choice in the end, you know, with the, the experience he had and the fact that he'd run all week in practice as well. So, you know, uh, there is a connection there. I saw Graham last night. Um, all I told him was, uh, I just want my qualifying ring. You know, uh, I said, I want one that has, says 231 on it. I think that's, uh, that was pretty cool to achieve that. Um, and I'm, I'm really pleased with the performance we had all month, you know. So just a uh, shame not to be out there today. And But Graham's going to do a great job. The pride you take in being here, though, to see the, the final work this crew has put in and to get this car and this, these guys are ready to put that 24 out there. The Dry Ryan Bolt, Keystone Mary Sports crew have just done an absolutely amazing job. You know, like the car, they, they switched to a whole new backup car and it looks just as good as the, the, the car that I was driving. So they've done an amazing job and, um, you know, super proud of them. And that's why I wanted to be out here today just to see them and give them a little lift right before they go into this big, big journey ahead of them. So we wish Steph all the best. So row 11 will look like this. Graham Rahal gets into that number 24 car. So they move to the back of the pack at 33rd. Ironically, he'll be starting next to Jack Harvey, who originally bumped him out a week ago. And the rookie Stingray Rob will start on the inside in row 11 here this afternoon. Thanks, Brad. You know, a lot of people, thousands of people actually, get up bright and early before the sun rises even to make their way here to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. A lot of people like to be here when they hear the boom, boom. At 6 a.m. every year, and our Rafael Sanchez talked to a man who is honoring his father here at the race today. The boom of the cannon and the fireworks marked the beginning of race day in Indianapolis. This couple from Southern California came to honor the memory of Duke Parsons. He passed away in 2006 and did not get a chance to attend an Indy 500. So today his family came in his honor. It fulfilled it. It fulfilled the dream. 
and I got you know a little choked up and I'll probably I'm probably heading there right now but I'm I'm, I'm okay I love Indianapolis it's, everybody's beautiful and I love it I love it Programs. and on this Sunday they're expecting one of the biggest crowds since the pandemic at Pagoda Plaza, Rafael Sanchez for brunch at the Brickyard. She loves Indianapolis and we love her fancy hat she had on there. I like the style. I like all the clothing <laughs> that we see here out yes. there. And there is plenty to see when it comes mm -hmm, to that. Definitely. Of course, when you get up that early, you gotta have a good hearty breakfast. Ooh, yes. You gotta serve it up, make sure you have fueled for the day. Our Adam <laughs> Shoes for the American Legion serving up breakfast in Speedway. Now I'm joined by Commander Lawson. Why, why is this so special? It's because of the historic behind uh, Post 500 next to the in, in the Animos Speedway. For people watching at home, how many years have you guys put on this breakfast? Oh, they've been putting this on for like 15, 20 years. And every year we get different people in, a lot of people from different countries. We used to have people from New Zealand that would come here and camp and go to the race. I want to thank you so much for your service. Uh, what are people eating today? Pardon me? What are people eating today? Oh, they're having their scrambled eggs and bacon sausage and biscuits and gravy. And we have little Danishes and we have juice, milk, and just a, and coffee. Just a whole shebang for them to fill up and stick to their ribs before they go to the track. You guys, uh, a lot of when you talk about this, what is your favorite part about the traditions about the Indy 500? People. They're just the different people that come in and they're just so friendly and a lot of the veterans. This month is our money making for veterans and this year we've donated $148,000 to different charities. Just for things like this here, this is how we get our money. I want to thank you from all of us at WRTV. Thank you so much for your service and thank you so much for all that you do for the community. You are so welcome. We appreciate you. you. And our tour will continue here at Brunch on the Brickyard on WRTV. But for now, we'll send it back to you guys. Looks like a hearty breakfast there, Adam. Thank you for that. You know, when you come to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and for the Indy 500, the experience you have can, can range from hanging out the snake pit and bringing your cooler to upscale and ritzy yes. in the pagoda and some of the suites here. So it really is what you make it. It is, and our Lauren Casey visited the Andretti Hospitality Suite and talked to one driver who hopes to be in the field of 33 come next year. We are here in the hospitality tent for the Andretti team. This is where folks are kind of stopping by, grabbing a bite to eat before we get all of the festivities started for the Indy 500. A lot of folks coming out here today, and one of those in particular is an Indy Next driver. I'm here with Hunter. Hunter, good morning. How are you? Good to see you. I'm doing great. It is race day here in Indy. You're originally from Australia. You are a driver racing for New Zealand. This is a big dream of yours. Someday to race in the Indy 500, right? For sure, you know, I've known this race since I was a little kid watching it on the other side of the world. So to be racing, obviously, for Andretti and Indy Next is, is awesome because we get to experience up close the IndyCar side. And for me, obviously, next year, the plan is to be in the car here. So, yeah, loving it. What are some of the things that go into getting up, gearing up, I should say, to someday race here out of the track at the Indy 500? What, like, goes into that for you? It's been many years of working towards this goal. Even where I am right now, you know, it's been a lot of hard work driving wise you know i've got a lot of great sponsors and people behind me obviously a great team as well so there's a lot that goes into it from so many aspects um so we're quite close to the goal but obviously need to keep pushing so like i said just really happy to be here and uh hopefully next year we're, we're sitting in a car well we hope to see you there uh you said you've been out to this race a couple of times first impressions what's your favorite part about the indy 500. there's so many things obviously the star of the race is crazy, you know, the jet fly over, everyone's on the, the grid, it's so special. You know, I've never seen so many people in one spot for a sporting event or any event in, in general. So, uh, you know, it's the biggest one day sporting event in the world and when you're on the grid looking at all the people, you realize why. Um, so, it's awesome, there's nothing really like it and you can't explain it until you experience it. Well, Hunter, best of luck to you. We'll have to chat next year when you're maybe in the lineup there of the field of 33. So we hope to see you there. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hunter is one of the top young drivers in the Indy Next Series, one of the Indy Light Series, driving for Andretti. There's a solid chance here in the next two or three years that we see him trying to qualify for the field of 33 here in the 500. About half of this year's field raced in Indy Lights. 
before they made it here to the big show. So it's been a great development system, and that kid's got a solid chance to be part of it here very soon. And that's how they advance. That's, that's the, the road to Indy right, right there. You exactly. bet. I got to say, guys, it's starting to get a little warmer out here. It feels oh. nice. Uh, the clouds thin out a little bit, and it warms up. Yeah. Um, there's a lot being consumed here today. Very little of it is milk. <laughs> But the most important drink of the milk of milk comes from the American Dairy Association at just the right time. It's all about meeting people here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and we have a group of visitors from Nashville, Tennessee. You guys are going to be given an awesome responsibility, of which they don't know what it is yet, but this is Carrie Estes and say hello to Alex. They will present the milk to the winner of this year's Indy 500. So go ahead and let them hold it if you can. So we're gonna let you guys hold the milk that will go into the winner's circle. Do not drop. So tell me, Carrie, you're a dairy farmer in Shelby County. That's right. What time did your day start this morning? Well, actually, my kids, we were we were downtown Indianapolis to make sure the milk got in the track, but my kids, God bless them, got up at 3 a.m. to make sure the cows got milk because, listen, the show doesn't stop even for the Indy 500. So, according to my mind and history, when we all got refrigerators, the milkman stopped delivering to the ice box, but you still delivered a victory circle. That's exactly right. It took a little practice. Uh, got to do it last year, like Alex Neuenschwander gets to do this next year, but I get to be the milk guy that I get to give it to the driver. You're a first generation dairy farmer? That's exactly right. First generation dairy farmer did not grow up on a farm, uh, but my wife and I had a passion that we wanted to raise our family on a farm. And so uh, God blessed us and we were able to uh, be able to do this. What's, and What's the greatest challenge to dairy farming today? Well, there's obviously financial challenges, but probably just, just the mental side, the fatigue of doing this twice a day, 365 days of the year. Okay, could you hand that back to them for one second? Absolutely. Okay, guys, I'm gonna have you put that back in here, okay? All right, we're gonna put it back in here, guys. Here you go. Whoa, no, yet. Oh, I'm teasing you. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Just set her in there. It will be delivered to Victory Circle. <laughs> they didn't see that coming. The cooler snapped back. Um, so the drivers will give 100% and hope to get 2%, 2%. milk. 2%. Can I tell you, I think there were like 20 of them that are looking for whole milk at the end of the day. That's right. Oh, yes. right was that straight from the udder this morning? Did I hear that right? Is there more, more to it than that? That's what he said. That's what he said. <laughs> from the cow this morning. <laughs> I can't remember, though, the last time a driver actually drank the milk. It's just the right pour over. Yeah, the pour over. Yeah, exactly. We got a picture of that. Way back in nature, exactly. <laughs> Well, there is a lot of fun to be had here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So many different traditions. You know what's, but you know what's coming back? A what? trend. Mustaches are making Ooh. a return. Right. And so we sent Caitlin into the snake pit to find the best mustache. <laughs> Another big thing about the snake pit is the outfits, right? I look around, I see a lot of checkered flag clothing, but I couldn't help but notice this. this first you love. Okay, obviously it's all to do with racing, right? But what are you most excited about for today? Subtronics! Everyone's excited for them. Okay, why did you want to wear this to the snake pit today? Because I, cause I wake up every morning, I excellence. <laughs> Okay, okay, how are you pacing yourself for today? Um, I'm not, that's the thing, we're not. Okay, no one is pacing themselves, everyone is just here for the party. It's a great time out here at the Snake Pit. There's lots more fun coming out through the rest of the entire show. <laughs> So no wait. mustaches, I was going to say, so wait, she still needs to find the best <laughs> okay. mustache. Still got to find it there. We'll get her on right. it. Right. And Ricky Bobby was a NASCAR driver, correct? Yes. Close. <laughs> Close there. Well, not far from where we're sitting here is the town of Speedway, where a lot of people are gathering, preparing for the day, even just hanging out. And our Adam Shoots went over there. That's right, because you can sometimes leave here and still have a great time on Main Street. Yeah, Mark and Nicole, I think the correct term you're looking for is you're, if you're not first, you're last. But I don't think that will be used today. We're still in the town of Speedway where people are tailgating. I want to show you one of the first original pace cars of the Indianapolis 500. I'm joined by two people who this is your family friends lot that you guys have been to the Indianapolis 500 at least 20 years right now, right? Yeah, this will be my 20th race. This will be my 15th race. So what do we have going on here? We have quite like the elegant setup. It's not just like 
Keystone and Bud Light. You got fences, flags, pace cars. What do we got going on here? So we started coming, uh, the family's been coming for 54 years, and they started coming to Hedgerow, and then when all the construction happened, we started coming here, and the whole idea is we want to bring restored cars, and, and so bring the whole thing and let everybody have a great time. What are the streets both you know about this car? What is this car? You've got quite the cheering section behind you, not a phone in sight. <laughs> not a phone in sight. No, this is, I believe, from the 1920s. Yes. And yes. this is uh, one of my dad's friend's good car, or my, one of my dad's good friend's cars. And every year they they drive a different car, a different pace car in from over the years. So every year one of these cars is something very special to our friends and family. A lot of adult beverages will be down today if they haven't been downed already. You got one in your hand right there. It's all about moderation, and how do you go about pacing yourself? You can't win on the first lap, but you can sure as hell lose on the first lap. <laughs> what about you? Well, it's a marathon, not a sprint, but at this tailgate, we are, we're a Miller Coors family. No Budweiser in sight, so we're, uh, we're pacing ourselves, but sometimes we get a little, get a little excited about the race. No Budweiser, out. not a phone in sight. Thank you guys for joining me. Enjoy the race, and Mark, Nicole, as their fan section cheering section cheers them on for all of their good times that they just had. We'll continue to keep you updated, bring you more of the sights and the sounds throughout the tailgate party here in Speedway. But for now, if you're not first, you're last. Mark, Nicole, we'll send it back to you. <laughs> Thanks, Ad. We appreciate that. And good to point out that the party doesn't have to start inside the gates. The party starts outside the oval. Yeah, Adam's the right down. over there, right behind <laughs> us. TV from 22 feet away yeah. being made here. If if you haven't started your party before you've gotten in here, you're behind. You're behind. <laughs> I'm not doing you got a pregame. curve right now. So pace always sounds good on paper until you kind of see people about 1 o'clock. Yeah. After the yeah. green flag, and the pace wasn't really quite a thing. Right, you gotta bring those sandwiches. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> you gotta bring the food. Forward. Ten years ago, Tony Kanaan won the Indy 500. Ever since then, has been easily the most popular driver just here in this city, in this state, around this race, around the IndyCar Series. One more go for TK. Final ride. This is it. Will he have the storybook ending to his career? We will find out soon. I know you're not cruising in the same mode on this, but there's a certain point when you've got to think about, hey, we're going to get in the car and go no. drive the race. No, they go in parallel. But it's not, I was ready for this. You know, I mentally, I'm still going to cry like a baby, but still going to be emotional. But I've been preparing for this, and they ran parallel. I'm, I'm enjoying it, but I'm also focusing on the race. And that's something that I think I managed so far. Obviously, uh, tomorrow it's still business. And then Saturday with the parade and Sunday with the driver's intro, I think it's, I'm just going to lose it, but I think I'm entitled to it. You've always been a parade guy, though. I know that. How much? I know you just look so forward to that, though, and to be able to be the man of the people and to be out there to see that one more time. Oh, 100%. I'm going to jump out of the car, get yelled, say that's not in their insurance. <laughs> Moving on. What are they going to do, fire me? <laughs> Tell me I can't come to the parade again next year? So, yeah, it's going to be a party, and it has been a party. I mean, we've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying everything. I mean, you know, we talked before. And, and I mean, everything, nothing this month has been a pain, which I can't say that I said that years prior to that because you always have a tendency to complain a little bit here, a little bit there and this month. And I have to say, I, if, if, I, if I have one regret, that would be it. I should have enjoyed the other parts a little more and not just focus on the entire race all the time. How much of a joy has it been with this team situation you find yourself in, having this car and these guys around you and all of it that's that's made the, the racing part of it just as enjoyable as everything else? I mean, I know it's going to sound like cliche, but we, we clicked. I clicked with this team from day one. Zach's been a friend for three decades. He was my teammate, and I felt right at home. And, and, and it worked. And then, you know what? If we save the best for last, we save the best for last. But I, I love where I'm at. I love the people, I love the way they work, I love the way the mentality is, what they do, and, and, and we're winning. So everybody loves winners. Man, that smile has been there all month long, and we will see how it goes today. Tony starts on the outside of row nine, and look at this roster for row three. Three former Indy 500 champions, the rare opportunity for them to be grouped together. 2016 champ Alexander Rossi, two-time champ Takuma Sato, and TK will start on the outside in ninth. And I'm really rooting for TK, Mark, because it would be such a great story if he won 
on his last year here. It's amazing during qualifications weekend. The fans just go crazy for TK. They really do. And he's got a great support system, too. I had a chance to talk with Lauren last year. Oh, yeah. She gets so excited. His wife. Yes. yes. When, uh, when he really excels at that. I mean, just a great support behind and him. And I believe their kids are out here as well. Right. So she had, she had posted that it's amazing for them to see him at this point in his career. Rallying around dad. Yes. Like that. You know, there's a big job to be done here when it comes to keeping people safe, making sure they know where they're going. Have you heard the term yellow shirts? Yes, there's <laughs> such an important part of race day here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And our Lauren Casey got a chance to talk with them. Well, we are out here literally right by the track right now. It's still early, and so I wanted to talk to a few of the folks who know a whole lot about the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and they are the folks that can help you out if you don't know where you're going today. So bringing in the yellow shirts, we've got Harley and Bonnie with us here today. Good morning to you guys. Happy race day. Good morning to you. Fine, oh, well, Harley, I'm told you got volunteered by Bonnie to do this interview, by the way. You've been here working as a yellow shirt for a number of years. 34 years. 34 years. Why do you keep coming back year after year? Uh, because I enjoy it. We enjoy the fans. And if I decide to leave, I won't necessarily miss this, but I'll miss the people I know. So. You are an expert here at the track. What is the best part of race day to you? Don't say uh, the end. That's a, that's a hard question. <laughs> Uh, just make sure the people are safe and the, um, call me a bad moment. Um, make sure the people are safe and we enjoy the race. And we're here to um, make sure that they enjoy what they're doing and it, it, it go with uh, excellent experience. Well, Hoosiers, we are the best at Hoosier hospitality because of people like you, Harley and Bonnie. I'm not going to let you get away without answering some questions. What is the best part of race day to you? Anything? The best part is the first lap. When they come down the straightaway, all 33 of them, and hit that first turn, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it. And, of course, when they sing again back home and again in Indiana. That brings tears to your eyes. Well, we appreciate the work that you do, Harley do. He's, he's running into people he knows. He's busy. He's, you're popular here, so we hope you guys have a great race day, that everybody's safe, and that they have a great time in Indiana. He works at the museum. And you also work at the museum. Yeah, I'm lucky enough to drive a bus on the track every day, almost. Oh. I get to go around the track, let people kiss the bricks, and take them back to the museum. So I've got it made. I love it here. You guys have the best job. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. Have a great race day. Great to meet you, Harley. Great to meet you, Bonnie. Good luck today. We'll talk to you guys soon. Back to you. Well, if you go back in history, do you know what the yellow shirt started as? What I don't color? Know. Take a guess. White. Blue. 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 Okay. And if I'm wrong, Donald Davidson, I know you're out there. You text me, but I think I read it was blue and they were made of wool. How uncomfortable would that be on race day? Art, I was nervous earlier today. Oh, you had a I big had interview. A, I had a microphone in my yes. hand and the governor of Indiana was walking my way. What, what should I do? What should I do? What question? I'm in Pagoda Plaza with the governor of the great state of Indiana, Eric Holcomb. One more, 500 in you, right? After this there year. There is indeed, and so uh, two, more, uh, two more witnessing of the drinking of the milk, and, uh, but I'll come back after that too. I was here before governor, I'll be here long after. So don't think that I don't do my homework. I was on the governor's Twitter page this morning. Oh. You were at an IMS Hall of Fame induction ceremony last night, and then also 500 Festival uh, Memorial Day service in the last couple days. Yeah, two uh, very special events. Obviously, the Memorial Day or ceremony is the reason we're able to be here to honor and celebrate the lives and the legacies of those who laid it on the line, paid the ultimate sacrifice and their families so that we could, 300,000 of us could come together on a day like today. Uh, and then yesterday or, uh, we celebrated uh, the newest two inductees into the IMS Hall of Fame. So Tim Sindrick is one of those. Now you have a connection to him. We grew up together uh, in elementary school and, uh, and forward and have remained obviously real good friends. Uh, so I was able to introduce him to everyone and kind of provide not just the professional 
side of Tim Sendrick, but the personal side. As a kid that went to Pike High School, grew up in central Indiana, came to the race long before you've reached this position, oh, yeah. did you ever imagine no. that I'll be here no. someday no, no. as governor of no. Indiana? No, and that's what I said about Tim Sendrick. I mean, Tim Sendrick, getting to introduce him into the Hall of Fame would have been, it would have been an honor for any governor. But for me to introduce him, and he went in with Tony George, and so the Holman family to us growing up in Claremont, it was a little surreal for me to be watching Tim go in as you looked up to that whole dynasty. Uh, but Tim's earned it and uh, deserves all the accolades. And then for me to be here, it's storybook. Well, good to see you again. Good to see you. On this gray day up there, the gray hair there of the go. governor and Mr. Gregory. We're earning it every day. Yeah. How about that, man? That was my news debut. You I did an did interview. Great. I did great too. But hey, it's not it's, so it's, gray outside anymore. Nah, it's getting a little, it's hazy. I feel the sun. I think I need some sunscreen. Feel a little warm now? Oh, if you Good. just rub my arm and you'll get some. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you just slather it on, didn't he? <laughs> but that's a good lesson learned, right? Hey, have we heard from, any, have we heard from Caitlin and Todd yet? I feel like we need to get back to the snake pit. Should we find them? Let's see what Brad. Caitlin and Todd are up to in the snake pit. We were talking about the top of the hill at the snake pit. Obviously, the snake pit's in the background. Yeah, we made it's it to nice the hill. We made it to the hill. The view's nice, and the people are even better. Yes, the people are even better. They were rolling down this hill, and I was told I had to do it with them. So, uh, all right, okay. you, you, you do it. I'm not gonna get dizzy, I'm but. A little nervous. Okay, let's, let's just go for it. Come on. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Oh! <laughs> He, he went a little crooked. How many beers has he had so far this, uh, today? <laughs> he, he, he's still going. All right, so what we got in the, what we got going on here? We got the fried chicken, right? The, st the staple, the chicken tenders. What we got in the coolers here? Red Bulls, Miller Lights, beer. All right, all right. That St. Elmo's cocktail. So, all right, you guys are just getting going. So, you guys stay on the hill or do you venture down lower? Um, I think we will venture down lower at some point today. All right. Who's your favorite? Who you want to see the most? Oh, uh... Shaq, Shaq. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, Shaq said he's not good enough for us at the 500. Oh, you bought his shoes and everything, and now he's not even here. So, all right. Well, have you recovered? Dizzy. Yeah, that made me dizzy, and I haven't even been drinking. I know. Well, that's why you went the straightest yeah. down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> you, did, you didn't bend and curve off to the left. Yeah. So, all right. Well, things still picking up here. Yeah, there's still going. a lot of people flowing in to the snake pit. The party is really just getting started. This thing yeah. will be packed. Well, once they get the headliners that go during the yeah. race, it's going to be nuts in here. So, we, yeah. might, we may have to venture back. But yeah. as for now, yeah. it's the happenings on the top of the hill here at the snake pit. <laughs> rolling down the hill. I'm sure rolling, it's packed now. <laughs> right. Everybody, so many people have made their way over to the snake pit at yes. this point. But there's probably not even room to roll down the hill at this point. Well, listen, you get your rolls in when you can and then get onto the show. <laughs> get your rolls in when you can. Who does that? That's a good 20 feet up there. That's not a small hill. Right. I only eat rolls now. <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah. Save that for yeah. the kids, man. All right, the front row of this race is an interesting bunch this year, an international Fast. field. We talk about that indeed. We have Spain, the Netherlands, and Sweden representing our front row at this 107th running of the Indianapolis 500. In the middle of that, a young man who has been on the front row three straight years. He'll start second today for Ed Carpenter Racing. It's Renus VK. Renus VK will start on the front row of the Indianapolis 500, which has become a regular thing for you. So welcome back to this. What is the view like for you as the green flag waves from that front row? Um, a lot of people. You see a lot of people in the stands, but uh, they kind of fade away at one point when you go to power. And when the race really starts, then you start getting the tunnel vision. But uh, you know, it's nice to have you know zero cars in front of you when you uh, when you start the race. What is going to be? We're talking to guys about strategy from the middle of the pack, from the front today. How do you kind of manage this 500 miles? Because there's a lot that can go into this and not have to try and do it all at once. Uh, I mean, we'll we'll see how the race progresses. You know, you, we, you know, we kind of have a plan, but it's it's hard because there's so much stuff that happens in this race. There's so many cars, and it's such a long race. So uh, I think uh, you know my goal, most important thing, is to stay in the lead pack, in the top five, until the end when fuel safe goes out the window and everyone can push. So I think it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a good one. Do you appreciate that when they give you a full send and say just go? <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Um, you know, fuel saving. Uh, it's good for the environment, but it's not fun. Uh, so I, I just like going, you know, full throttle and really let the racing do the talking. 
you've been so good in this car and qualifying here to make this translate to race day now. Kind of uh, what what do you see as kind of being the most important part of this ahead of you? Um, I mean, uh, the most important part is just you know the race today. It's um, make it to the end. Make it to the end and you know get get a chance to race for the win. That is that is, that is just the most important thing and. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see in what position we put ourselves uh, at the end, but uh, definitely to finish first, first get to finish. Had a great month. All the best day. Thank you. We'll see what's in store for VK out there. Yes, I can't wait to see. We are getting closer and closer to the 107th running of the Indy 500. I can just feel the excitement building out here at the Motor Speedway. In fact, we are just 27 minutes away from the flyover. You're right. If you are living in the town of Speedway, <laughs> you are used to the sound that happens I around the noon love hour this moment. every year. Oh, it's such a great moment. But first, we want to go to our Lauren Casey, who spoke with the Speedway marching band earlier today. Lauren. We are out here on Pagoda Plaza, surrounded by marching band students from Speedway High School. They have a really important job here today in their hometown. You guys are waiting for the Borg Warner Trophy, is that correct? We're with Amy. She is the band director of Speedway. Good morning to you. Good morning. Yes, we're waiting for the trophy to come through here, and we will es help escort it through the infield all the way onto the track. So you tell me, you guys are not only marching here at the track, but you marched to the track. We did. We're not that far. It's just a few blocks that way. Um, and we marched here this morning, um, and we got here to the Pagoda, and now we're taking a little break, and then we'll fall in behind the trophy. Well, there's a lot of students, you know, across the country who are part of marching bands, but nothing like this where you have the Indianapolis Motor Speedway literally in your backyard. What does that mean for the students in this program? This is one of their favorite events of the year that we get to do every year. We do the 500 parade yesterday every year um, and just the pride that I see in their eyes as we're performing is just amazing and it's a great time in this town and it's just a lot of fun. Well Amy good luck to you guys today we'll let you get back to escorting the Borg Warner Trophy a very important job but thank you for chatting with us and have a fun race day. Thank you you too. Awesome. Back to you guys. Everybody who comes down to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway here at the track makes their way to the yard of bricks. You have to stop at the start and finish line. You gotta kiss the bricks. You gotta kiss it. Tradition, right? You gotta do that. And so Rafael Sanchez is pounding the pavement out there. Of course, today. Rafael yeah. made his way there. Janetta Holder got up early as she made her way through Pagoda Plaza. She's made the checkered quilt for every winner of the Indy 500 since the year 1976. Who was your first 500 quilt for? Uh, Johnny Rutherford. Johnny Rutherford got your first quilt. Yeah. How long does it take you to make the quilt? I just, I, I sketch them and think I know what I'm doing and then I get to sewing and it don't look a thing like what I've sketched. You don't have to go very far to find some interesting characters. Like this young man, you'll want to meet him. He's the walking yard of bricks. Oh, how have you been? This is my Christmas every year. I come here and it's see the family that I don't want to see on Christmas. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, already tearing up with the uh, the bagpipes and everything. This is an annual event. A lot of pictures, a lot of say, hey, saw you last year. Can I kiss the bricks? <laughs> Who can kiss the bricks? Anybody that wants. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody. I believe you may have a few years ago. I think I got a picture of it, so... And any time you can catch a glimpse of the bagpipers and the Borg Warner Trophy is a good day at the track. It's all part of the tradition. Mark and Nicole, back to you. All right, Raphael, thank you. You know, I had a chance to talk with Janetta, Miss Janetta, at the start finish line year after year before the race started. And what I love about Miss Janetta, She's got a wild side to her. Do you know she used to race too? She was a racer. Yeah. I talked to her on Monday out here. First of all, she is she's a feisty one. Right. Number one, she raced some stock cars back down in Kentucky about 70 years ago at this point. And man, she's got some racing stories and she loves it. And they say that whoever she visits in the garages the morning of tends to win the race. Oh. Actually, that's what she said. Wow. Well, yeah, that sounds good. We'll have to find out where she was before we make any picks yeah. out of this one today. Alex Pillow is going to lead the field of the green flag from pole position in this through. race today. 2020. 21, just his second season in IndyCar, won the championship. Came back last year, was a contender all the way through. He looks the part of a champ, he sounds like it, and today from P1, he could be the guy that brings home the checkered flag once again for Chip Ganassi. 
30 years ago, a number 10 Chip Ganassi racing car led the field of the green flag here at the Indy 500. That was Ari Leyendijk on pole. Alex Pillow will lead the field today at P1. Now, how are you feeling this morning? It's been a very good week and a good month for you so far. Yeah, it's been, it's been an amazing month, uh, but especially last week, it's been pretty awesome uh, to be on pole and just to be celebrating all week. It's not that we've been partying all week, but it's like uh, all the media and all that stuff, uh, all the fans that are always complimenting the job that we did so uh, feeling amazing we know we have a fast car we're gonna have the best view heading into turn one um, and we know it's gonna be a long day uh, 500 miles 200 laps it's it's pretty tough but uh, yeah we'll do everything we can to try and lead the last lap you learned a lot in your short period of time here racing the 500 do you feel like this is kind of the convergence of all of this with what you've been able to put together with this effort so far yeah that's what I want right like I want to be like, um, yeah, this is going to be my fourth Indy 500, the third one that we're standing up front and fighting for it. So hopefully uh, we can get it. But uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that feel the same way. There's a lot of people that have been here for more than 10 years uh, and they have even, even more experience. But uh, I mean, I think we are ready. We learned different stuff in 21 uh, last year as well, being up front and then dropping back to the end. And this year we'll try and have a clean race. Um, and get the car ready for the last 25 laps that are the most important ones. I was going to say, what's that number you look for, kind of that last, we always ask guys, we know it's the last stint, but is it the last 50 miles, 100 miles? When does it really start to go, okay, now we got to do it? I mean, it's actually the last three laps, but <laughs> yes. um, I would say the last stint. If you're up front, the last stint, like let's say top three, you're going to be uh, looking very good to the end. Uh, even the top five, you could make it happen, but uh, it gets tougher from uh, down there. But yeah, last in, hopefully you can get a clean last stop and, and lead into that and, and then just play around uh, with another driver. Okay. It's going to look great at the start though. Enjoy. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great to see there. You, you know, I can think back to 2013 when I did my first Indy 500 yeah. as a reporter here. And so it's been great seeing some of our uh, other colleagues cover their first Indy 500 and what they, the stories they come back to tell us they've discovered. I know. I've been telling everyone in our newsroom, you have to get out there. You have to experience it. There's nothing like it. It's contagious to be out here. So our Adam Shumes is live out here today. And Adam, this is your first one. Have you had a good time so far? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I don't know if I can even put into words how much fun I've had. Mark, Nicole, you guys prepped me all week for how much fun I'm going to have out here, how much I have to really pace myself, just like the viewers have been telling us how much they really had to pace myself. I really had. I'm really running out of energy, and if you know if I say that, that is really hard. I want to show you how close we are to the track. You can hear those trumpets, the sounds of the track, getting ready to kick off the 107th running of the Indianapolis 500. He may not have the best seat in the house, but he can hear it all. I want to introduce you to one of our one of our fans here today. His name is Marty. Marty, how excited are you for you to listen to the race today? Well, I'm just going to listen. I'm not going over. Uh, this is a prime location here, and if they cut that tree down over there, I can see. <laughs> well, we might have to work on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we might have to work on that, but you, but you have your grandkids here with you. What does this mean as far as traditions is concerned? Uh, this is everything. If you're a race fan, this is a prime location. I mean, I tell everybody, well, I've got a place right across from the first turn. Until you've been here, then you know. Well, Marty, hopefully you have a good day. Who's your, who do you pick to win today? Looks like well, Helio. Well, Helio, okay, but VK is who I'm really kind of pulling for. Well, I think my colleagues are rooting for VK, too. Mark, Nicole, you've been, Mark, at least you've been to at least 10. Nicole, you've been in quite as many. I still have some work to do, but for now, we're going to set it back to you in the studio. Thank you, guys. The first year is always a fun one. Looks like you're learning quick out there, Adam. From predicting the race to predicting the weather, it has been so far overcast the clouds thinning a bit that'll warm things up it, overall a cool race day minimal rain chance but minimal breeze too so you get in there with 299,999 other people that are sitting this close and, and not much warm, happens right. um, I learned something new every year here at the track what's that and the Borg Warner Trophy, I learned there's one name that's misspelled on there. Is that right, Brad? Trivia question. The answer is Johnny Parsons. Mm. Order from 1950. And so his his first name is correctly spelled with an IE and it's spelled with a Y on the trophy. We're not going back to fix it. We're stuck with it. That's it. Too late. Yeah. Too late. Yeah. 
But we're just about three hours away from finding out who will earn the right to have his or her name next on the Borg Warner Trophy. I got a chance to talk with sculptor Will Behrens, who's here today from North Carolina. Once again, he's been for 30 years the sculptor of the trophy. They got a new base on it that's been rolling around here. It just looks great and such an iconic piece of the history of this race. Um, do you have to be a steady driver so you don't tip that over? <laughs> I sure believe the do. speed limit on that is about five. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A lot of people go to get their picture taken next to it. So a big tradition that continues on today. The green flag awaits us. The countdown is in its home stretch. It's been a great race day, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you after the race. Have a great night. Lipozine is worth the price because Lipozine is clinically